everybody and welcome back once again to Let's Play Skyrim. So, just to start the session, we need to level up. Putting my level increase into Magicka for this one, and then we have one perk to spend. And now whatever are we going to spend those perks on? Uh, it's a good question. I have Mage Armor 3 of 3, I already have stability. Which means I don't really have anything else to put this perk point into. Because the rest of my perks are going to go into Expert and Master. I think. So uh, we're a little bit short. But however we're not short in Enchanting. And Enchanting is also a skill tree that I would like to put a few perks in. You know? Increase my uh, Enchanting abilities. Uh, Enchanter 3 of 5. Okay. So we'll start the enchanting tree. Increasing the strength of my enchantments. And I can't resist. Enchantment? Anyway, here we go. As we left off last time, we were here at Iverstead in the Vilmire Inn. Having just explored Shroud Half Barrow. It was quite the affair. Uh, but uh, with the exploration complete, our time in Iverstead is now done. And as I highlighted, we are now heading to Riverwood. Because I think it's about time that we went back to Delphine. When I find it, there we go. Diplomatic immunity. We head back to Delphine to see what lies in store for us next as part of the main quest. We're going to use that to direct us into the next area of Skyrim. So wherever the main quest will take us, that is where we shall hunker down and carry out our next portion of exploration and questing. So whether it's Solitude, whether it's Riften, whether it's somewhere completely different, we'll soon find out. So, without further ado, we're going to step out once again into the big wide world as we plod across the land and make our way towards Riverwood. And to start our exploration, Elwyn has one book left to retell that he read a long time ago, but we really haven't had much time to, uh, to listen to it. We've heard Dwarves Volume 1. We read Book Dwarves Volume 2 in Calcimo's little laboratory. Which leaves us with the final book in the trilogy of Calcimo's writings, which is uh, Dwarves Volume 3. And therefore, as we begin to make our way back to Riverwood, we'll listen to what Calcimo has to say in his conclusion of the Dwarves series. Dwarves. The Lost Race of Tamriel. Volume 3, Culture and History, by Calcimo, Scholar of Markarth. In this final volume on our discussion of the Dwarves, again see the term Dwemer for reference using the more scholastic name, we will attempt an examination into the distinct culture and history of Tamriel's lost race. We must, however, begin such a discussion with a warning. Despite what certain academic circles would like people to believe, there is so far no evidence that verifies any claim as to the Dwarves' particular customs, morals, myths, legends, laws, systems of governance, or involvement in major historical events outside of those few examples that remain undisputable. For instance, while we can say with absolute certainty that the disappearance of the entire Dwarven race happened very suddenly, only the laziest of junior scholars would say that this event happened in the same day or even the same hour. There is simply no proof to dispute the theory that perhaps the dwarves disappeared from Tamriel gradually over the course of several years or indeed several decades. There is also nothing that disproves the source of this disappearance as being attributable to mass deaths, plagues, magical contamination, experiments into the nature of Aetherius gone wrong, or even race-wide teleportation into one of the plains of oblivion. There is simply too little that the dwarves left behind that points to the nature of the Great Vanishing Act, and this same frustration applies to all aspects of their social structure and history. What we know then can only be inferred by the writings of the other races 
which made contact with the dwarves before they left Tamriel. The Dark Elves, Dunma for example, teach their great prophet Theravar helped to unite the dwarves and the elves in Morrowind against occupying Nord armies from Skyrim in the First Era, but Nord and Orc writings also indicate that the dwarves were also allied with them at various points and in various legendary battles of theirs. Unfortunately, none of these legends and folklore make an effort to describe the dwarves in great detail, only that they were a secretive people and that an alliance with them was unusual enough to warrant crafting a story around. And past the first era, no race makes note of encountering any living dwarves at all. This is further confounded by the fact that so many of the dark elven writings on their relationship with the dwarves were lost during the tragic eruptions of Vardenfell during the Oblivion Crisis nearly 200 years ago. What secrets they could have revealed about the lost race are now buried beyond layers of molten earth along with so many unfortunate dark elven people. Thus, we conclude our discussion on the dwarves on a sombre note. As with all scholarly endeavours, we are left with more questions than we have answers, and the proof we so desperately search for is so often out of reach, denied even to the most fervent effort. The mysteries the dwarves have left us could easily warrant another century or so worth of personal examination from me, and quite possibly even several millennia of excavation of even one dwarven ruin would be insufficient to paint a complete picture on them, but what we can see from our threadbare tapestry of dwarven artefacts is a careful, intelligent, industrious and highly advanced culture whose secrets we as students and teachers of their works can only hope to uncover some day. Alright. So... Fortunately for us, no dragons came swooping down, but of course it's too, it's still very early, there's plenty of time left for that to happen. Uh, I've been doing some thinking whilst I've just been wandering towards my destination, listening to the music. Bear with me, it seems like we have problems here. Whatever shall I do? Hmm. over your valuables, or I'll gut you like a fish. Let me get this straight. You're gonna try and rob a man that's just summoned a Dremora Lord that stands by your side, and you're not a little bit perturbed by this? <sighs> I'm gonna tell you this once, and if you just choose to ignore me, then be it on your head. Walk away right now, and I'll pretend I never heard those words. Nice try, but you don't scare me. Maybe I don't. I'm not gonna ask again. My friend here will prepare to die. And I guess that's your last request, fool. Oh! Chop him down! Oh, yes, indeed, there cannot be any other end. <laughs> Stupid thief. But I shall take your belongings. A sapphire. Well, quite the lucrative little kill. And some elven armor. Always goes down a storm in the blacksmith guilds. Come. So. Speaking of summons, I did remember asking last time that we should... Uh, uh, asking you to submit your your suggestions for a name for my storm atronach. Now I uh, have read through those comments. Unfortunately, before I started today's session, I I didn't pick a winner. So on this session, there will be no announcement. However, on the next one, I shall remember because I I do have a couple already in mind, a couple of short listed in my mind that I particularly liked. So on the next session, whenever that we may, that won't be for too long away, I would not imagine. Next few days or so, uh, we shall name our Storm Atrianarch like we have named all the others. And there's also the question about the Dremora Lord I'm now summoning. Is that Fluffy from the Sanguine Rose or somebody different? I would like to suggest 
that it's uh, somebody different. And why is an alchemist lying in the middle of the road? It's rather strange. Hmm. Maybe on an errand, running supplies from somewhere to somewhere, ended up killed. Maybe by that thief that we've just seen. Rather unfortunate turn of events. So yes, the Dramora Lord will need a new name as well. Because he's not fluffy. Long distant relative of his, but not quite the same chap. So yes, name required for my new Dramora Lord too. If you'd be so kind to rack your brains. So what was I saying before I was rudely mugged? Yes, I was trying to say that I've been doing some thinking whilst I was walking from Iverstead listening to the rather delightful music of, of, of Skyrim that uh, many, many times I've been asked why I haven't got a horse and the main reason why I didn't have a horse was because I enjoy just plodding along, picking herbs but uh, as of late as you've noticed, no doubt, that uh, I'm uh, being a little bit more selective about the herbs I pick. No longer is Elwyn picking every herb going like some kind of OCD maniac, but maybe just preying upon the alchemical ingredients that he's either short of, or that he is uh, hasn't, hasn't seen before. And by now that's actually getting quite rare. So, uh, picking every last blue flower and purple flower and thistle and more common tundra cotton etc isn't quite as nece uh, necessary. Which begs the question then, if that was the only thing stopping me from getting a horse, then why not get one now? And I have to agree that that's a, that would be a good question to ask. So uh, maybe in the not too distant future, when the opportunity presents itself, next time Elwyn is in a major city, he might. Oh, hello, Wolsey's. Don't come any closer. You don't want to die. Seriously. That's right. You just bask in the morning sun. That's lovely. Oh, butterfly wings. Although butterfly wings, I'll never get bored of plucking those. <laughs> Tundra cotton? Nah, nah. We'll leave it. So, yes, uh, mm, Elwin might. Just consider parting with his hard-earned coin now that he's bought his expert level spells. He won't be buying any more spells for some time, so he's got 10,000 gold to spend. Of course, we might buy a house in our next city, use it as a sort of home away from home. Um, but other than that, nothing else to spend that money on, so it makes sense, I suppose, for us to use that for a slightly quicker mode of transport. Travelling from Iverstead to Riverwood, for instance, could cut our travelling time down significantly by uh, mounting up on a trusty steed. My only concern is for Berlina, of course, because if I mount a horse and ride off into the night, she's still going to be on foot being left far, far behind, and that's going to be kind of cruel. It's a shame that your followers can't have horses too. Unless, of course, I am wrong and they can, but I don't believe so. And this is a rather strange setup. As far as glitches go, this is quite uh, artistic. Floating weapons, a dead body, and three shields. There could be a name in here somewhere for this rather artistic piece. Look at it. Weird. <laughs> Treasure Hunter? Oh. Treasure Hunter's Note. We've got some lucrative items too. Right. Let's take a look at this note. What does it say? It says... <coughs> I'm close to finding the Dwarven Battle Axe of Harvesting. I've tracked it down to Anselvund. It's apparently guarded by a Luar. I've been to Anselvund for a quest. 